and welcome to this regular expression basic tutorial. Regular expression is a very powerful tool which lets us search for a specific pattern or a match in a text. It's very powerful because it's not language specific so you can use it in a lot of programming, programming languages like Python, Java, etc. It can find a number plate, license plate, it can find a personal number, a mail address or a birthday in a specific text. So in this course, I will learn you the basic syntax of regex. I will teach you how to code your own regex. So by the end, you will be able to write your very first uh, regex code. And I will prepare you for my advanced course. The syntax of regex will look something like this. And I'm sure you will think this is impossible for me to understand and read. But I promise you, in the end of this basic course, you'll be able to understand and even write it yourself. So we need uh, some sort of a tester to test our expressions and I will recommend that you go to Google, write in regular expression and find a tester here. I'll use the regxr tester but I mean there's a lot of testers here and it doesn't really matter. I think this is this one is very intuitive. So what this is, is um, we got an expression field up here, which is the regex expression. We can write it in here. And there's a text uh, field right here, which is the text that we want to search for matches in. It's quite easy. Um, so without further ado, we'll go right into the coding. Anchors. We can type in any number of letters and it will match us the, any string with those letters in it. Let's see how that works. So we'll go to the tester again. We'll delete the expression. We'll delete the text. And we could write something like Anders is clever. Then we can go into the expression and type in Anders. It will match us uh, the Anders. We can type in is. It will match us uh, the is. We can type in clever and so on. We can even type in ERS. And I think you'll get the point now. However, if we type in Anders with a small a, it will not find anything. That's because it's case sensitive. If we want to change that to be case insensitive, we can go into flags and click case insensitive. And now we can see that it will find uh, Anders. We'll get back to flags later. We could test if this string starts with, uh, for example, a and d. We will um, type in the circum accent and then a and d and we can see that this uh, text that this string indeed starts with a and d we can test if it ends with ever so then we'll type in ever and then we'll make a dollar sign and we can see that it ends with ever if we um, had said let's say put in a here we'll see that it will not it's not ending with ever a but however it ends with ever we can even uh, match the uh, whole thing. So we could write uh, this, hold, hold on. Anders is clever and we can see that this is an exact match. Now we will introduce quantifiers. We could type in hello with a star that will mean that it will match the string with hell and then zero or more O's. We can type in hello and a plus sign. It will match the string with hell and one or more O's. And we can type in hello question mark. It will match the string with hell and then zero or one O. Let's check how that works in practice. We could start by typing in hello here and if we type in in the expression hello we'll see that it will find one match we could um, try to type uh, hello with a star afterwards that was matches uh, a string with hell and then zero or more o's so that's right if we uh, delete one o we'll see that it still matches and we, we can oh, sorry that's Euros, and we can type as many O as we want and it will still match the entire thing. However, if we wrote a, 
a plus sign afterwards. Um, it will still match everything. That was one or more O, so if we delete everything, every O, it will not match anymore. But if as long as we have at least one O, it will match. Then we could um, type in the question mark. We can type in the question mark, like hello, and a question mark. And that was, it will match um, any string with hell and then zero or one oh. So we'll type in hello here. That's, um, that's one oh. We could type in hell, that's uh, zero o's, that will work. And if we type in two, we'll see that it only it will only matches uh, up till the first O. We can um, type in these curly brackets after the hello. Um, that will match a string with hello and two O's. If we type in three, it will match a string with three O's. We could type in hello, curly brackets, and then a number and a comma. And if we type in two, it will match this string with hell and two more O's, or two or more O's, in fact. Then we could uh, type in hello, um, and then a range like this. It will from two to four O's. Uh, let's, but let's try to see that in practice. We'll go over to the expression here. And we all could type in the first one was hello and then curly brackets and a number. So that's two O's. We'll see that it will find this. It will not find this. If we we'll do this, we'll see that it will find exact uh, two O's after hell. Then we could uh, type in the comma. It will find all the O's after um, not find anything here like this then we could uh, type in um, a number after this we could type in six and we'll it will find up to uh, six O's four five six like this and the next one it will, it will not match like this we could uh, write in the expression uh, hell like this then we can do uh, normal brackets, type in hello, like this. And then we can type in uh, a star. And it will match a string with hell and zero or more lows. So if we do like this, we can see that it will match every low after the hell. But if we type in over O, it will not match anymore. That's pretty clever. We could um, use the curly brackets up here again. So we could type in two, uh, comma four. Then we will close the curly brackets like uh, this. And we will find uh, hell with two to four uh, lows um, afterwards. So here are the four lows. one already done. Now we will take a look at um, classes. We'll go back to the tester again. We um, will introduce three new classes. So one of the classes will be uh, D or digit, but just remember D. It will search for a digit in here. So if we typed in three here, we'll find that. And we've typed in four here, it will find this six here and uh, like six here yeah you'll get the point then we could type in uh, uh, w and it will find any word it matches any digit any character any underscore so you can write an underscore here it will find anything then we can even um, find some white space there's no white space in here that's like the space bar like this, um, something else, the tab bar like this, it will find that, the space bar, and then we'll, it will be the enter, um, um, enter test. 
So, uh, and we could even combine those. Let's say that we want to find uh, two digits after each other, or three digits, for example. We'll write in the D, then the curly brackets, type in three, close them again, and we'll see that it won't find anything. That's because there's no uh, three digits here. Then we will, we could, but we could write in three, three here. We will find the three digits. Of course, we could change this to five and uh, write five digits here, and we will find that. So we can combine anything here. Then there is the or. We we'll, could write something like, um, let me delete everything. Hello. But instead, we'll write hell, then we'll write uh, brackets, then we will write O, and then we'll write the vertical line A, close the brackets. That means OR. So that means it will find any hell ending with O or A. We could write in hella, find that, hello, we'll find that, but it won't find hello, hello. I think that makes sense. Now we'll talk about the flags. We uh, introduced it uh, with the case incentive, case sensitive case, but we'll talk more about the flags. So the flags we'll find up here and it will, it will be right after the expression that we did this uh, now. So uh, there's this uh, global. If um, we turn it off, it will only find the first match. So it will not find anything else. But if we uh, turn on the global, it will find all matches. That makes sense, huh? Then we can um, turn off. We can talk about the case incentive, in, uh, sensitive case we saw it before. Right now it's uh, case sensitive. So if we, for instance, wrote hell, it won't find anything. But if we change it to case incentive, it will find the hell find anything here with the global on so we can combine those flags um, the last one I will introduce you for in this basic course is the multi-line course uh, well the multi-line flag but the multi-line um, flag does is that it will now um, when we use their um, circum accent or their dollar sign it will match at the start of end of lines a line is uh, divided by uh, enter press, so you will see that these ones are lines. But um, right now, if we typed in um, like hell, um, it will now find uh, every line that begins with hell. But if we haven't checked the multi line, it will only find the first one. That makes sense. We can use it with the dollar sign as well. So if we type in um, low and then a dollar sign, it will only find this one because that's the last um, part of the sentence. But however, if we click multi-line, it will find all uh, the end of the lines ending with low. Now we can start to combine things. So. Um, We'll uh, practice that. There could be some kind of a number plate, an email address, a reference. Well, we got unlimited possibilities. Let's see how that works in practice. Let's say that we want to find a Danish number plate. A Danish number plate is characterized that um, it will start with two letters, a space, and then six digits. So like this, that's six digits. We could write out this. This is not a Danish number plate since it doesn't have the space. We could write out uh, this. It's still not a number plate, Danish number plate, because it's it only has uh, one um, letter in here. But uh, let's try out to find a match that will search for a Danish number plate in a given text. Um, we will delete this expression. First off, we will need to. This is the Danish number plate, by the way. I could write in Danish number plate afterwards. Um, so we want to check uh, first off uh, that it will have two letters. So we will write in a word 
now it will find anything. So we'll need to find two, uh, two letters like this. Well, we still find like almost everything, two, two, two. Then we will have the space bar. Now it won't find those many. And then we'll have um, two, four, six digits. Then we could write in um, the digit command. And then we could write in the six, the following six digits. And now it will match as the Danish number plate. We could uh, search for uh, an email address as well. So let's say that the email address was me at uh, mymail.com, like this. How do we uh, search uh, for that? Well, we, we don't know how many words that's uh, in front of the at at an email address and we don't know how many uh, well, it's actually a letter that's after the, the at in an email address, so we'll just write uh, this. We'll make to we'll have to make sure that there's at least one uh, letter in front here, so that one we will go with a plus. Now we will have to uh, check uh, for their um, at sign. We'll just write in at. Now um, we'll want to test for uh, at least one word after the add sign. So that's the same syntax as before, W plus. Then we'll write in the dot and then we'll write in uh, like a com like this. Now we'll find uh, the mail. And if we try to write something like me at mymail.co.uk, it won't find anything, but if we want it, Anders at this is not my mail, but it will find it because uh, those are letters in front of the at and letters afterwards and a com address and that's what this specific code is uh, is for. So right now you are done with the uh, basic course, and um, I will see you in my advanced course.